The Death of Jacob Genesis 50 In the closing of the book of Genesis, we are told about the death of Jacob. Jacob's life began with adversity. He jostled for position in the womb with Esau and was born clutching his brother's heel. Similar to his mother, Jacob also had favorites. Rachel was his favorite wife, and her children Joseph and Benjamin were his favorite sons. In fact, Joseph was so favored that his brothers became jealous and sold him into slavery. Joseph eventually arrived in Egypt, but God was with Joseph, and he eventually prospered in Egypt, rescuing his family, including Jacob, from famine. Jacob died in Egypt and was embalmed at the request of Joseph. Jacob came to live in Egypt with all of his family. Before he died, Jacob blessed Joseph's two sons and gave thanks to God for his goodness. I never expected to see your face again, and now God has allowed me to see your children too. This particular story has many important lessons for us. Genesis 50, 1 through 14. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for him, for such are the days required for those who are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. Now when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, Behold, I am dying in my grave which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. There you shall bury me. Now therefore please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father. And with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their little ones, their flocks, and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with them both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great gathering. Then they came to the threshing floor at Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and they mourned there with a great and very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father, and when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a deep mourning of the Egyptians, therefore its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them, for his sons carried him to the land of Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as property for a burial place. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who went up with him to bury his father. The first verses are about Jacob's funeral. Genesis 50 begins with a description of Joseph's grief. Joseph obviously adored his father, because when Jacob died, Joseph fell on his father's face, weeping and kissing him. You may have had a similar experience. Weeping is natural and appropriate. When those we love pass and go to be with the Lord, God gives us the opportunity and blessing of mourning for them. We weep, of course, for ourselves, not for those who have died in the Lord. We agree with the Apostle Paul when he says in Philippians 1.23 that being with Christ is far better than living. Philippians 1.23 For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. We wouldn't bring them back if we could just to see our departed loved ones in the presence of the Lord, reunited with their loved ones and friends up there. When Christians weep, we do not weep as those who have no hope. We mourn, but hope is mixed in with our sorrow. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Genesis 50 verse 4 Now when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh. The Egyptians embalmed Jacob for forty days as part of the seventy days of mourning. This was followed by a burial expedition. Part 2. The Brothers Fear Genesis 50, 15-21 when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, 
Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now therefore do not be afraid, I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Despite the fact that Joseph's brothers mistreated him and sold him into slavery when he was a teenager, he graciously forgave them. But Jacob was no longer alive and the brothers were concerned. This is the unresolved issue of guilt. They frantically sent a message to Joseph, pleading for forgiveness once more. Joseph, on the other hand, had already forgiven his brothers. They had simply not forgiven themselves. Maybe this describes you. You came to the Lord Jesus Christ burdened with sin and guilt. You confessed your sins and asked for forgiveness, realizing your need for salvation. And Christ pardoned you. However, you may be having difficulty forgiving yourself. If you have come to the Lord Jesus Christ and asked Him to forgive your sins, He has freely forgiven you and will never bring them up again. Don't you believe it's past time you forgave yourself? Joseph sobbed as he thought about their unresolved guilt issue. Then he told his brothers that what they intended for evil, God intended for good. Everything that comes into your life has a long-term purpose from God. You don't have a thing in the world to worry about, Joseph basically told his brothers. I want you to know that I will look after you and your family. I'm going to do exactly what I said I'd do. That is exactly what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will do. He will always keep every promise He has made to you. He will never fail you. You can always rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why should you be afraid? Part 3. Joseph's Faith As we study Joseph's life, we see that he had given his heart to the Lord as a young man and had lived for the Lord all of his life. Now, in his final days, we see what God does for those who live for him and serve him throughout their lives. Genesis 50, 22 through 23. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knees. First, Joseph experienced the delights of God in his closing years. Genesis 50.23 says that Joseph lived to see his grandchildren. The children of your children are very special. In the final years of Joseph's life, he was experiencing God's delights. Genesis 50.25-26 Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. However, Joseph anticipated God's deliverances as well. Joseph was aware that he would die soon. He also knew that God would one day bring his family, who had fled to Egypt, back to the Promised Land. God will surely visit you, he said, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Joseph did not want his ashes to be scattered in Egypt. See those bones of our forefather Joseph, the Jewish people would be able to say, God will visit us and lead us out of Egypt one of these days, just as He promised. When He does, we will carry that box of bones into the Promised Land. That's exactly what happened according to Exodus 13.19 and Joshua 24.32. Exodus 13.19 And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Joshua 24, 32. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem, in the plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. Being a Christian is wonderful. I'm so thankful I'm saved and will go to heaven when I die. I will have a resurrection body, 
and will live forever in heaven. I'm so grateful to have a Savior who can transport me from this world to the next. The book of Genesis comes to an end. We've come full circle from creation to a coffin. We've made it all the way from glory to the grave. We've gone from the living God to a dead man in just one book. We've witnessed humanity's greatest failure as well as the first steps in God's grand plan to save us.